Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to go ahead and create a very simple project just to get back into the swing of creating regular videos again. So I've gone ahead and created the old fashioned game, Noughts and Crosses or it's commonly known as Tic Tac Toe. While this is a very simple project targeted for beginners, I do hope you can still find some value in this. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened up the project. The first thing you'll notice are these two um, player one and player two labels. These are going to be for the player's name. The label in the middle is the current winner and of course we have the grid in the middle. Two buttons at the bottom are for restarting and exiting the game. Inside of the project folder you'll see that we've kept it very simple with only two scripts and half a dozen textures. The workflow for this scene is very simple. We have a camera component, we have our game controller, this is the manager, manages the current state of the game and keeps a reference to a list of all the tiles and we also have our canvas. This is broken up into containers which um, separate elements of the scene, for example the grid container and the top bar container. The grid here is built up of button elements. These also contain a tile controller which we'll get into shortly. The total bar just consists of two icons and an input field. This allows the players to insert their name into the game. As you can see our total controller is very simple. We only have a few references here, one is to the game controller and the others are to the elements of this button. The two functions here update the state of the tile. The reset tile is only called when the game is restarted and the update tile is called every time we press this button. Essentially we're just changing the text of this button to either an X or a zero and then just calling end turned on the game controller. Inside the game state controller we keep references to all of the UI elements, assets that we spawn in as well as the current game settings. The most important part of the start method are setting up the listeners. For each of the listeners, when the value of the input field is changed, we create a callback to this function here on player name chain. When this is called, we're updating the variable of the player one name just to be the contents of the input field. The final two primary functions of this class are end turn and change turn. The end turn function is called at the end of every turn. Inside here we're just checking all of the possible win conditions by taking the list of all the elements and checking their nearest neighbours for a possible win condition of horizontal, diagonal or vertical. These are checked line by line to ensure that the text inside all of the buttons is the player's turn which is either an X or a zero. Finally we have the change turn function. This is called at the end of every turn uh, and we're just simply flipping the value of the player's turn which is either an X or a zero. Once we flip it, we're just enabling some UI elements to give feedback to the player of whose turn it currently is. Well, that's it for my first real video on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll continue to upload some more, getting into some more detailed subjects. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. If not, you can dislike it, of course. Um, yeah, thank you.